Hey, hey everyone, this is Shane from Game With Gas and today we're going to relive our dreams of being a surgeon with another surgeon simulation game, a little flash game played in the browser, so um, this should be a lot of fun. Um, the first one that we're going to do is we're going to do some cosmetic surgery today and we're going to do saline breast implants first. So without further ado, here is Surgery Squad. Welcome to Surgery Squad's Virtual Breast Enhancement Surgery with Saline Implants. I'm Dr. Susie, and I'll be assisting you with this procedure today. For those with a weak stomach or have children in the room, I need to let you know that the next few steps get a bit graphic and contain nudity. Oh, good stuff. This procedure may not be appropriate for work or school environments. Click the Continue button when ready. Oh, I'm ready. Dr. Susie. Breast enhancement surgery, also known as augmentation mammoplasty, involves increasing the size or changing the shape of a woman's breasts through the placement of saline implants under the breast tissue or under the chest muscle behind the breast. The surgery can give a woman fuller breasts, are too small, and wants to augment them through surgery. She has spent time with her doctors to understand what is involved in the surgery, as well as the benefits and risks. Her surgeon offered a computer program that simulates what the patient would look like with different breast sizes. Use the slider to demonstrate to our patient what she would look like with different size breasts. Okay. It looks like our patient has chosen a size she likes. <laughs> the biggest one. Let's scrub in and get to work. Yeah, let's do this. In order to make sure each implant is in the correct position, we must first mark where the current top of the breast is and where the midline between the two breasts is as well. This will help us when we position the implant. I've marked each of these with a dotted line. Can you draw them in with a marker? Yeah, sure can. Trace the midline and the line above each breast. Okay. Now we need to measure oh, the breast okay, good. to decide where the top of the implant should go. We do this by measuring with a caliper from the middle of the areola. Draw with the marker at 12 centimeters to mark the top of the implant. Then draw the outline of where the implants are going to be placed. Okay, we'll do. But last time I tried this, um, all I did was press it down once and everything got colored in. On oh, some this patients, time I didn't even need to press anything. The creases below the breast are not at the same level. If this is the case, we would make our incisions at different levels to ensure the breasts are even after surgery. However, this is not the case with this patient. To begin the surgery, we need to start an IV to provide our patient with fluids and medication. I've already tied a tourniquet around her upper arm. Can you find a suitable vein in the patient's hand? Sure can. Um, this one. Wow, that's a big one. Sterilize the insertion area <laughs> using an alcohol wipe. How's that? Good? I'm using a lot of wipe. How much alcohol do you want on your hand? Insert the needle and advance the angiocatheter into the vein. How about that? The small piece nice. of blood that just appeared in the angiocatheter hub is known as a flashback. This lets us know that the angiocatheter is correctly positioned in the patient's vein. Now I'll release the tourniquet. While applying gentle pressure over the vein to collapse it, you can remove the needle. This will reduce the amount of blood that may discharge out of the angiocatheter when the needle is removed. Once you remove the needle, it will be properly disposed in a sharps container. Cool. Hey everyone, aren't we learning something today? I know I certainly am. If this is really how surgery goes, um, we're all going to be fully qualified by the end of this series. Click where indicated to remove the needle. Okay. I'll lock the IV tubing to the angiocatheter by rotating the locking mechanism. Lastly, we need to secure the IV with tape and test the line. Oh, that is tape, that's for sure. Next, we'll use a chemical antiseptic known as chlorhexidine to cleanse the patient's skin. 
use the applicator to apply the chlorhexidine to the surgical site. While some anesthesiologists oh, okay. may prefer to give a patient a general anesthetic using the IV line, we'll be administering it using a face mask. Once the patient begins breathing in the anesthetic gas, her bloodstream will absorb the gas and carry it to her brain. At this point, her brain will stop receiving signals from the nerves in her body, allowing her to be completely asleep and pain-free during the surgery. Start by placing the mask over the patient's nose and mouth. Once it's in place, we'll turn on the anesthetic gas. Oh, do I need to be the anesthetist as well? Click hey, over here. Over here. No? There we go. Ah, listen to that gas. You know how much we love gas on this channel. Now that our patient is unconscious, we'll insert an endotracheal tube into her mouth and down into the windpipe. This will help her breathe and provide a constant mixture of oxygen and anesthetic gases during surgery. Okay, into the mouth. The incisions for breast enhancement surgery may be made under the breasts, around the areolas, or under the arm. For our surgery, we'll make the incision under the crease of each breast. This area leaves little noticeable scarring. Now sketch where we'll be making our incisions. Is that good? Perfect. Nice. Now let's grab a scalpel and make the necessary incisions so we can insert the implants. God, now it's getting serious. Scalpel. Oh. With our incisions made, we'll now make room for the implant. To do so, we need to slide a finger into the incision and gently sweep it back and forth to separate the pectoral muscle from the ribs. Using a finger is gentler than a metal instrument and lessens the chance for damage to the nipple's nerves. I don't want to put my fingers in there. Oh, God. Oh, here's my fingers. Woo! Two of them. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, come on. Ah, oh, sounds. Oh, that breast is really quiet. It's on silent. Now we carefully insert a retractor and cauterize any muscle groups still attached. Oh. Oh, what's that? Oh. Oh. Oh, great. Now that breast is making noise, too. What are you doing in there? Nice job. Now we need to prepare the implants. Breast enlargement is achieved through the placement of a silicone pouch called a lumen. The lumen may be filled with either silicone gel or saline. There are advantages and disadvantages to each type. Click each implant type to see the pros and cons of each. Okay. Silicone. Pros of silicone gel breast implants. Maintains a firm shape, resistance to ripping or collapsing, similarity in feel to natural breast tissue. Cons of saline breast implants. Wait, pros of silicone gel breast implants and cons of saline breast implants. I think that might mean cons of silicone. Either way, potential silent ruptures, silicone related health risks can inhibit mammograms and breast exams. Saline. Pros of saline breast implants. Low safety hazards from with leaks. Immediate detectability of a ruptured saline implant. Lower cost. Increasing or decreasing the size of existing saline breast implants is fairly simple. Create less noticeable scarring since requires smaller incisions. The cons of saline. Less natural feeling, weight and texture. Tend to collapse or distort when laid flat or in other positions. Our patient has chosen a saline implant. Ah, uh, come the on, that one sucks. The implant is shipped filled with sterile air. Click the implant fill site to snap the fill tube into the implant. There you go. Now click to squeeze the air out of the implant. We'll use the same tube to fill the implant with sterile saline. 
Great. Let's go back to our patient to insert the implant. First, we attach the fill tube to a syringe filled with our saline, and then we'll insert 50 cc's of saline into the implant. There we go. Nice work. Yeah. Next, we'll insert the saline implant. Notice that the implant is mostly empty. This allows us to roll the implant and easily slip it into the pocket we formed under the breast muscle. Can you slide the implant into the incision? I sure can. Oh, more of it. There we go. Get your fingers out of there. Well done. Now we'll inject the rest of the saline. Right, now right. we adjust the implant with a finger and then pull the fill tube out. The fill site automatically closes when the tube is removed. Click to give the tube a sharp tug. I'm sharp tugging. Ah, there we go. Great. Let's do the other breast and then we'll check them for evenness. Okay, in goes the implant with the fingers. Here's a syringe and get our fingers in there. And now we're going to take, take this out. There we go. Our patient is still under anesthesia, but we've placed her in an upright seated position. This is so we can inspect the breast for implant placement and evenness. We examine the top and bottom of the implants in the breast, as well as the placement of the nipples. It looks like the left implant is a little higher than the right. Can you lower it? I guess so. Can I? Of course, I've got to jam my fingers up in there to do it. Perfect. <laughs> now we need to move our patient back to a flat position to prepare to close the incisions. With our patient lying down again, we'll inject some long-lasting numbing medicine into the incisions before closing. And now we're ready to suture the incisions closed. Okay. Nice stitching. I know. Rest enhancement is typically an outpatient procedure. The patient is released once she has recovered from the anesthetic. When our patient returns home, she needs to ensure that she's following our doctor's recovery guidelines. Be aware that if the implant is placed under the chest muscle, limited activity will last longer. And there we have breast enhancement surgery using saline implants. After our work and her recovery, our patient is happier about her appearance and is more confident in herself. Thanks for stopping by Surgery Squad. Why not check out one of our other procedures? And now we're going to move on to the next section of surgery. Welcome to Surgery Let Squad's tattoo laser removal. tattoo removal. I'm Dr. Susie, and I'll be assisting you with this procedure today. Hey, Dr. Susie. According to a recent poll, over 50% of those with tattoos want at least one removed. They cited being too young when they got it a new career, or significant life changes, such as divorce or childbirth, as reasons why they no longer want them. Luckily, there's laser tattoo removal. Laser tattoo removal is a procedure that uses a powerful laser that reacts with the ink of a tattoo to break it down into tiny particles. The laser directly targets the tattoo pigment and leaves the surrounding skin virtually untouched. After the ink is broken down, it is removed by the body's immune system, creating a natural-looking fade that typically only time or sun exposure would produce. Although laser tattoo removal is considered highly effective after multiple treatments, those interested need to keep in mind that yellow, green, and fluorescent tattoo inks are much more difficult to fade. Our patient today is a male in his mid-twenties that got a tattoo on his calf when he was a teenager. Now that he's older, he doesn't see the tattoo as being so attractive anymore. In fact, he's come to us to get it removed. So let's scrub in and see what we can do for him. Yeah, aren't you cool Before jogging we around begin, with those glasses? we need to go back in time to the day he picked out his tattoo. Not Help really? him pick out a real winner. Use the arrows to scroll through the tattoos. Click Choose when you have made up your mind. Oh, God, that's horrible. I'll choose that. Oh, Yikes! God. She doesn't really look like that, does she? Let's make that tattoo disappear! During our patient's initial consultation, it was recommended that he take a non-aspirin pain medication prior to the procedure to reduce any discomfort he may experience. Other than that, there really isn't any other preparation needed. So let's get started! 
A lot of patients describe the pain from the laser as feeling like a hundred rubber bands striking the skin at the same time. So to begin the procedure, we'll need to place a cold compress on the tattoo for a few seconds. This will help reduce the pain caused by the laser. Go ahead and place the cold compress on the tattoo. Will do. Instant chill pack. Oh wait, do I need to open it or something? Oh no, it's good. That will do. Yep. Now we need to use the laser to fade the tattoo. Different types of lasers react with certain colors of tattoo ink. One laser might work perfectly for reds and oranges, but not so great on greens or black. So we'll use a variety of lasers to get the desired result. To help relieve some of the pain associated with the procedure, we'll also use a machine that blows icy cold air on the area being treated. Let's start by targeting any red or orange ink areas. Okay. Oh. Next up is green, blue, or other darker colors. Now we've got some blue here that we need to get rid of. And that's some black. Get rid of some black. No, we can't get rid of black. Finally, we'll remove the black. Right. How about that? Now that we've completed the first treatment, we'll need to place the cold compress on the treatment area to relieve some of the pain. Okay. There you go. Have an instant chill pack. You did great! Our patient is ready to go! Immediately after each treatment, the tattoo may feel sunburned, and it is extremely important to keep it covered until it heals. If our patient fails to do this, both his recovery and the results of the treatments may be negatively affected. Roll the bandage over the treated area. Oh, God, that was a loud sound. As stated earlier, our patient's tattoo will only begin to fade after multiple treatments. So he shouldn't expect the tattoo to go away during one session. While the tattoo may not be completely removed, it should be lighter and much less visible than before. And that's laser tattoo removal. Well done! Why not try your surgical skills in another surgery here on SurgerySquad.com? And that concludes our surgery for the day. That was um, a lot of fun, removing tattoos, installing breast implants... All in a day's work. So um, there's a lot more surgeries to complete, so I'll be getting through all of those and uploading those to the channel. But until then, I will see you all in the next video.